Hello and welcome back to the Tin Boy. And I'm Pragmatic Lee, and today we've got a little project that's going to involve the surface grinder again. And before you even get into watching this, I'm going to tell you and I'm going to admit this is 100% overkill. It might be two, 300% overkill. But what we're going to use the surface grinder for today is to sharpen uh, some cold chisels. I went through some of my tools the other day and organized them some and started the inventory and stuff. And got to looking at my cold chisels and punches. Uh, most of my center punches I had already sharpened a while back, but the cold chisels are uh, in pretty bad shape. And what I've got, this is a one inch cold chisel, never been used a lot. Looks like it might have been painted black at some point in time. Uh, don't find the name brand on it. Uh, this was in a box lot of stuff that I picked up at an auction maybe 10 or 12 years ago, something like that. Again, it's, it's never had a whole lot of use, it doesn't look like. But the, the end has been, as most cold chisels get, sharpened on a uh, surface grind. I'm, I'm sorry, sharp, sharpened on a uh, grinding wheel, bench grinder, it looks like. Uh, the bevel is off. Uh, it's off to one side as well. We're going to work at that. This is a three quarter inch cold chisel that is SK brand. Uh, that used to be SK Wayne. Uh, this is one that I purchased not too long after coming home from the Air Force in the uh, mid 60s. I was doing some construction work then and had a need for a chisel, went to a local hardware store and they sold the SK Wayne brand or SK brand. Bought a set of sockets from them and also this chisel. So it's also been ground on a bench grinder. Uh, while the edge is still pretty much in the center, one side is considerably, uh, has more, considerably more bevel than the other one does. Again, I've had this one since the mid 70s. This is a half inch one that my father had. Uh, I can recall numerous, numerous times of watching Daddy cut a rusted up, rusted nut off of a bolt. He literally would split the uh, nut with this. Uh, he ground it, sharpened it with a file many times, and after he got a bench grinder with it. And these may need to be hardened again. I don't have anything to get it up hot enough, I don't think. But I'm going to try putting, first off, just try putting a good edge on them. The uh, angle on that edge is off a little bit as well. This is a 3 8 one that I picked up while I was in the Air Force in the early, early 70s. It's a 3 8 Craftsman. It also has been sharpened on bench grinder numerous times and just not a good edge on it now, nor is it straight. And then finally, this is one my granddaddy had. And I've watched him, you know, cut rivets off of stuff, old, old farm equipment, uh, split a few nuts with it. Honestly, I'm not sure this was ever meant to be a chisel to, or, yeah, a chisel to begin with. You can see how that's mushroomed on that end. Uh, and it's actually flared out some down here. So it might just been a, a, of a piece of mild steel that he picked up and made a chisel out of it. I'm going to sharpen it. It does have a 60 degree angle on it, so it was uh, uh, sharpened properly at one time. I know a lot of you say I should have cleaned that mushroom off of there, but again, this is one my granddaddy had and used. I'm going to sharpen it, but I'm going to leave that mushroom on there. That's, uh, that's the product of his work many, many moons ago, uh, many, many years ago. So I'm going to leave, like, uh, leave it like it is. Uh, chances are, I will not ever use it unless I need to reach into a deep place at some point. What I'm going to use to hold these in the surface grinder is what's called a universal sharpener. This is meant to be used on grinders, uh, tool grinders, uh, maybe surface grinders. Uh, could possibly even use it on a mill as well. But it has, let's see, one, two, three, 
four different axes that you can adjust. I've got this setting now at 90. Uh, this axis at zero. This axis is at zero. And I've got this axis pulled back to 30 degrees to give a uh, 60 degree compound, 60 degree included angle on our chisels as we put them in there. This has a stop plate on the front of it down here that will line up against the mag chuck on the surface grinder. So I'm going to get this set up and get one of the chisels in and then we'll start doing a little bit of grinding. Okay, I've got the uh, universal sharpener uh, mounted mag down on the vise now. Again, it's got a stop right here that's up against the vise. This axis is set at 90 degrees. This axis and this one set at zero. And this one at 30 degrees, tilted back 30 degrees. We're going to start with this one inch chisel. And what I'm looking to do is once I get this mounted in here, holding it against the back, we'll tighten it down. Again, this is back up against the, uh, the back of this uh, jaw here. And what I want to do is grind until two things. Number one, I've got a straight line or I've got a line perpendicular to the edge of the uh, chisel. I've carried this over to the, or carried them all over to the belt grinder and taken off any mushrooming that may have happened on the sides. Once I get this down to what looks good over here, I'll set the zero up here on my uh, dial. Then once I turn this over, I'll bring back down until I reach, let me see if I can tilt you up just a little bit and show you what I'm talking about on the dial. Here's the uh, chisel, a little bit of a close-up of the chisel actually mounted in the universal sharpener. This surface grinder has two wheels on it. This wheel over here is, let's see, if that were zero, one revolution is 50 thousandths. This also has a fine feed on it, and what, if you lock down the major wheel, each revolution here is one thousandths. So that's what I will, I will zero out this dial and have this set at a zero point as well. So that when we turn it over, we can, uh, we can go down to our same depth. So for now, I'm going to bring this down. All right, I'm going to power up now and I'm going to bring this down until I'm just touching. Let me check my z-axis alignment. I'm using the course adjust now. All right, so there we've just touched. Up here on my, on my major adjust wheel, I'm going to set the zero. Right, we'll come down a thousandths with the fine adjust. All right, now what I'm going to do to be sure, like I say, I've got this set on 90 degrees and I've got this up against the stomp. But the proof is going to be is if that line it's making right there is uh, perpendicular with the side of the chisel. Let me get a little longer square. This is one of the reasons I started with this bigger chisel. 
so I could check this alignment. And it looks like it might need to go a degree or two beyond 90. And I believe I went the wrong direction. Guys, stick with me. I'm going to figure this out. Figure if I'm going to do overkill, I might as well do it properly. All right, that's got that line straight now. And I'm at 24 and a half on my on my dial up here. I'll make myself a note of that. I want to leave zero where it is. All right. Let me see if I can get this where you can see it. All right. This was the uh, age-old uh, bench grinder surface. And here is the uh, uh, what we just put on with the surface grinder. Now, once I've got it out, I'm looking and I'm seeing right here on this end that I've not quite gone deep enough. But I think once I turn it over and get this side, it'll take that little nick out that's right there on the end. So let's try that. And the fact that I didn't necessarily get this in there at the same same depth I will need to come back up find my zero again and then set it and come down to 24 and a half all right that's going to be our zero Now that I've got a feel of it a little better, I'm coming down to two thousandths at a time. All right, let me get my protractor and let's see if we uh, have figured this properly. According to what uh, I've read it said they should have a 60 degree angle on. And if I look at one of my other ones, that even though it has had bench grinder over the years, this one looks closer to a, well, that one looks about like a 75. But 60 degree is what it says, or what I've read online. So let's see if we figured it right. And that is right dead on 60 degrees. Looks like a good, a good edge on there. I will carry it to the stone, or get one of my sharpening stones and hone that edge just a little bit. All right, let's try the three-quarter inch one now. This is the one that, again, I bought it forty some years ago, and I can assure you, it's hit the, been hit with the bench grinder. 
with little regard to the proper angle many, many times. That was our zeros. This one looks like it's going to take right much more grinding to get it down to the to the 30 degree on this side. And again, when I'm grinding like this, occasionally what I want to do is traverse across the wheel and just find a different spot on the wheel. Okay, that looks good on there. That's 42. Like I say, I knew this one was gonna take a little more. I'm gonna bring my wheel back up to where I had zero before. That will help me get this the same distance in. All right, again, we've got a a good sharp edge now. Folks, I'm looking at a monitor. Any of you ever done this and realize you're looking at everything backwards? But hopefully you'll see good sharp edge on that. These dark spots on the side here are simply where it got a, it's getting a little bit hot. I'm going to let the wheel cool off just a moment. Uh, it's not so hot that you can't touch it, but you won't, don't want to hold your hand on it. All right, I'm going to continue this process on these other three chisels. Then I'm going to bring you back, and we may have a little something else we, we're probably going to do over here on the uh, surface grinder during this video. So stick with me. I'll be back shortly. Okay, I've got all the chisels sharpened now. And... If you recall, when I was working on this one, I was striving trying to get this edge right here perpendicular to the side of the chisel. I quickly realized I was uh, chasing the wrong rabbit. I needed to be working on getting this edge, the cutting edge, in line with the side of the chisel. Now, if these were all strictly proportional, those two would be the same. But they're not. They're a little thicker, um, especially these ones that have taken more abuse. Uh, this one right here, uh, the three-quarter inch one, they're probably as close to being as line, in line as the others. But I have checked them that the cutting edge is in line with the side of the chisel. And I've got all these done. Again, uh, this is one that come in a box lot. This one and this one were ones I bought in the early 70s. This one belonged to my father, and this one to my grandfather. What I'm going to do next, uh, since this video hasn't taken up all that much time, uh, to fill it out, I think what I'm going to do is see what we can do about reestablishing some points on some center punches. Now these two were done in a previous video um, where I set up a little small tool post grinder on the lathe. Let me get that and show it to you. This is a little air operated grinder that I made a holder for to hold on the uh, tool post on the lathe. And it would probably work okay, but the stones are not that good uh, that I had for this, and it's just not it's just not very stout. So while these turned out reasonably well on the uh, 15 degree angle on here, the 90 degree angle 
included on the points didn't turn out very well at all. Uh, this is one that evidently I've picked up since I did those or just didn't see in the toolbox. This larger 5 8 is a TAMCO, T-A-M-C-O, uh, USA made. So 5 8 This is a Mayhew, M-A-Y-H-E-W, USA, 5 16 center punch, 5 30 seconds point. Yeah, not 5 16 5 30 seconds. And then this one is a never seen that it's called her brand h-e-r-b-r-a-n-d her brand 444 made in usa really don't know where i got these center punches from but we're going to set up something that you watched me build in previous videos uh we're going to set these up and grind them on the surface grinder as well now these are all octagon shaped i have some hexagon hexagon 5c collets I have some squares, I have rounds, but I don't have any octagon. But I bleed between the SAE or the Imperial and the metric, we can find something that will clamp down on these. So I'll get set up on the, over on the surface mill and be right back. Surface grinder, excuse me. Okay, I'm back at the surface grinder now and I've got the uh, six inch sign plate. Uh, Mag down to the chuck now. I don't think you've seen me use this in a video before, but this is a sign plate I recently picked up. Yeah, it's six inch, six by six. It's quarter 20 holes, uh, mounting holes in it. I have the motorized spin indexer. Uh, you saw me build this in a, um, or motorize it in a video not too long ago. First chisel we're going to start with is this larger one. Not, I'm sorry, not chisel, but uh, 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 center punch. We're not going to worry about this taper right here. This That's fine. We're just going to deal with the business end right here, which is a 90 degree included angle. So I have the sign plate set at 45 degrees. Now, as I said, these are octagon. All my center punches are octagon. Don't have any octagon uh, uh, 5C collets, but I do have some square. This is a 5 8 and it will fit in there. It's got a little crud on it, but it, it will fit in. And it's gripping on four sides. So let's get this tightened down. We're going to be rotating opposite our wheel. Surface grinder going, or you'll get it spun up. And it appears to be ground a little bit off the center. But we're going to get it back on center. That's what it took, about three thousandths there. Still not striking quite all the way. I'm coming down two thousandths at the time. Now we're getting a grind all the way across it. All right, that's all it was to grind in that one. All right, our next chisel. This is the one that's got the really bad end on it. Almost a flat there. It is a 3 8 Again, this is the one that's a her brand, H E R B R A N D. Made in USA. It is 3 8 so we're going with a 3 8 call it. Again, a square one. All right, I'm going to have to take the hammer and tap that down. This has got a little uh, couple rolls on it. But I'll tap that down, bring you right back. Well, actually, all it had was one little burr on there. As soon as I tapped it with the hammer, it went right on in. So we're going to get this one mounted up. This one will probably take a little bit more grinding since there's a, there's a flat across there that's probably 150 thousandths anyhow.
Okay, I believe that's another center punch done. Okay, this last center punch is a 5 sixteenths. Uh, the point on it is 5 30 seconds, but it's 5 sixteenths and it is a hexagon. But I did not have, I've got some hexagon collets, but I did not have a 5 sixteenths. Uh, mine stay up in uh, 1 eighth increments. But what I did was take the, uh, the 3 eighths and cut some little sheet metal shims, just enough to shim that out. So that should, it should, should turn uh, close enough to center for putting a point on a center punch anyhow. So we'll get that tightened down. See what it looks like spinning. That looks pretty good. All right, we'll spin up the uh, surface grinder. I think that located center right there. I'm stepping down five thousandths at the time here. Very small surface on the chisel or on the punch. And that one was a two and a half thousandth, so is this one. As long as I'm seeing that spark during the whole revolution, I know it's centered out now. All right. Okay, let's go back to the workbench and I'll recap this short video. Okay, I think we're gonna wrap this video up now. Again, there was nothing really uh, spectacular about this, not that it is in any of my videos, but uh, I wanted to get something out and I did want to make use of some of my recent acquisitions here in the tin barn. I had used a universal uh, sharpener time or two just in trials, but never really uh, tried multiple angles. I'm really pleased with the way it uh, worked out. These, it held those uh, uh, cold chisels at exactly the 30 degrees I needed for a 60 degree compound angle. We also got to use the motorized spin indexer uh, from a few videos back. And as I said earlier, I don't think I had used the uh, sign plate uh, uh, in any of my videos yet either. This was a uh, acquisition, uh, well, it's part of, the wife told me to pick out my own Christmas stuff, and so this was part of it. But in any case, it was able to set up and give us a good 45 degree angle to get our refresh points on our uh, center punches. So I hope you enjoyed this video a little bit. I'll be, uh, coming out very soon with a, another tidbits video. And in that video, I'm gonna discuss something that several folks have asked me about. I've been very reluctant to even mention it, but the uh, power feed I have on my surface grinder. Uh, I've, I've taken a lot of flack over that. Uh, I posted a teaser video several months ago when I built it and you would think I shot some folks as mother because I've had folks tell me from every direction it's not going to work, it, uh, this, everything in the world wrong with it. But I've been using it for several months now, getting good use out of it, and I've had a lot of emails, messages on Facebook, and comments on videos wanting to know more about it. So stay tuned in the next week or so. I'll have a tidbits video out where I'll talk about that uh, uh, automated power feed on the uh, surface grinder. And also we'll talk about uh, a outside spider that I have on my lathe. And there may be a couple other little topics in there. So take, stay tuned and I'll see you on the next video.